Welcome to Focus Washington. I'm Chuck Conconi. I have a special guest today, Dr. Ted Shortliff, who is President, Chief Executive Officer, and see if I get this correct now, Amy A. Amy 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 I knew I'd get it. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Now you're involved in the work, you're the leading society of, but I've written it down so I know what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. informatics professionals. Mm -hmm. What is informatics? It's a little technical for me. Well, or informatics has really always been part of medicine. If you think about it, there are few areas uh, of endeavor in the world where you have to use information more than in medicine. Information about patients, mm -hmm. the knowledge of medicine. And for years, it's always been handled as just something you keep up here or you write down on pieces of paper. Uh, and increasingly, with the new technologies, we're able to begin to manage it, that information more using the electronic media, computers, communication networks, and the like. So uh, uh, AMIA is uh, a, a society of professionals who have worked to try to bring new technologies to bear. So this is a growing trend, in other words. It's very much a part of uh, the new field of medicine. It's pretty hard to go to a hospital today and not see a lot of computers around. The problem is that they don't always work optimally, and we have a field of people trying to make sure that they meet the needs of doctors and patients and nurses and other health professionals. But th isn't this more about sharing the information? I mean, not just, I mean, I know when I go to my own doctor, he sits there and he even has a laptop when, we're, when he's talking. When I'm telling him what my problems are, I think he's not paying attention, but he's sort of <laughs> typing it in. But, but is there a way that it's fed more around, more than just in one place? Well, That's what we're talking about, right? Well, indeed. It's, uh, of course, just having it in a computer and then using it yourself the next time you see the same patient can be helpful, uh, especially if you integrate into a computer the data from all kinds of sources, lab tests, x-rays, and the like, so that you have a nice uh, consistent record of what's been happening. But of course, one of the biggest problems with the old traditional paper charts that you, I'm sure you remember uh, is that they were physical things that could get lost and misplaced or be sure. in somebody else's office. And uh, that meant that uh, if you'd just seen a patient, another doctor was going to see them next, they had to somehow or another make sure they got the chart as well. And in an electronic world, that chart is shareable. It becomes a means of communication from one practitioner to another, from one nurse to another. And, and that's uh, very much uh, part of the logic for putting more and more of these data into computers. So it is more widespread. Now, for example, if I decided I want to leave Washington and move to Chicago, I can have all my medical records from all my various doctors transferred to Chicago that way? I wish that were true. And in <laughs> fact, the world is working to yeah. try to make that true. Uh, because it's clearly of high value to be able to do that. Sure. So you've probably uh, had the experience of one doctor tra transitioning records to another yes. one and they can't get them and they come by fax or they come six weeks late and you wonder why they can't get them instantaneously. We haven't had standards and, and, a, and a shared infrastructure that's allowed people to, to uh, uh, move medical records easily from one hospital to another, from one practitioner to another. Uh, standards are necessary to do that. The reason that you can go to an ATM machine in San Francisco and get money out of a bank account in uh, Washington mm -hmm. is because there are standards in place and uh, that all the banks use uh, that allows that to work. We've not achieved that kind of uniformity yet in the medical world. Is that coming? I mean, I, that sounds revolutionary, I assume. And, does, and will it make a difference medical-wise for me and my health or world health? Well, I, I certainly believe it will make a difference for your, for your health, uh, and we're seeing increasing evidence that it will make a big difference uh, around the world. The trend is, is real because it's recognized uh, that we have never had uh, a system in place that's allowed us to learn what we really need to learn from uh, the care we take of, of patients. We don't have ways of getting those data collected. Uh, analyzed. The public health system has been stymied by inadequate uh, access to uh, population data about what's happening. And in new developing countries where their health systems are just beginning to emerge, uh, for them to have good composite data coming from electronic records scattered in community clinics and that kind of thing uh, that will allow them to really understand what's happening and to do the best thing for their populace, that's uh, going to make a big difference. It's one of the reasons there's such enthusiasm globally for the use of these kinds of electronic uh, record systems. But I must say, you asked, what can it do for you personally? And, mm -hmm. I, and I think that's a very important question because some people worry that there are more risks to them as individuals from having their data in computers than actual benefit. Uh, and yet, we, we have so many emerging examples now of situations in which everything from legibility to the ability to communicate among mm -hmm. clinicians more effectively about you and your care so that the next doctor really does have accurate information uh, that's the most current, 
that can make a big difference to the quality of decisions that are made about your care in an emergency room or in the sure. operating room or even in another outpatient clinic setting. So, but what you're talking about is the privacy issue. Is there a way to protect well that, for that? And so that's what some people are very concerned about, and I think we have uh, great attention to that, both legally now through uh, legislation that's talked about the responsibilities of healthcare providers and practitioners to c protect data and make sure that, that, that the data are held in secure ways. Uh, there are penalties now for failing to adequately address that. And when people get concerned about uh, inappropriate access to their medical data, I often say, do you have any idea what the risk was when your data were in paper charts, on hospital yeah. wards, and almost anybody with a white coat could walk up and pick it up? And in the electronic world, you really do have to authenticate. They need to know who you are. Uh, you can be tracked down if you inappropriately are accessing patient data. And we've seen situations where occasionally it does happen that data are accessed inappropriately but there are very good measures that can be put in place. Well, I think for we're all afraid that. of electronics a little bit, but I, the other thing that mm -hmm. strikes me is well, what will this do about medical costs? I mean, we, we are so concerned of those soaring medical costs in this country. Is this just gonna make it more expensive for me or more expensive for my insurance? Well, there's little doubt that the rising cost of healthcare has been due to technology as, as well as other factors, but technologies are often kind of viewed as the boogeyman when, yeah. uh, as the explanation for uh, this kind of development of, uh, of increasing costs. The irony is that information technology, although it can be expensive, has real opportunities for reducing costs, reducing administrative overhead, simplifying uh, uh, communication, eliminating a redundancy of tests and other things that sometimes are done just because you don't know it was done by somebody else. So the better the information that's available to you, the, the better decisions you make, the better chance there is that you're going to be able to save someone uh, unnecessary cost. And so we do have uh, studies that show uh, reducing uh, uh, costs associated with the implementation of these systems. But they have to be implemented well, and they have to really achieve the goals. When that happens, we do have solid evidence of cost savings. Is there a way for us, as a, as a, just a, me as a patient, to inform myself better about this and also to talk to my doctor about it? Well, I think it would be wonderful if more patients talk to their physicians about this. I think one of the reasons we haven't had more adoption of uh, medical records yet uh, in the electronic form by physicians is that they don't feel that their patients are actually demanding this. I personally have found it incredibly facilitating to my care when my, I started going to physicians who used electronic records. Uh, now, maybe I'm a little bit biased in favor of this. I've been working on electronic health records for many years, but I must say I'm, I've found it pretty easy to explain to my friends who are not in this field uh, that they benefit tremendously when their physicians do use such records. So I think uh, going to your physician, mentioning that you understand that this is a trend that you yourself might benefit as long as they properly protect your privacy and the implementation of these systems, that uh, it will opens up opportunities for you sometimes to get treatments that might not otherwise be available because of the use of uh, clinical trials and, and, and new experimental drugs that can be uh, facilitated through the use of uh, computer systems. Well, there are lots Short, of reasons. Thank you so much for being <laughs> here. I mean, I, we could go on talking about this for some time, but I appreciate you coming on Focus Washington. Yeah, thank you. I'm Chuck and Coney, and this has been Focus Washington.